Today, we're going to look at On One Photo Raw 2020 as a possible Lightroom replacement. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Phil with Photo Gear Fun here today. I wanted to show you this On One Photo Raw 2020 application as a possible replacement for Lightroom. Lightroom moved to a subscription mod model a while back. So it's ten dollars a month if you get just the photo bundle. This is $100 or less if you want to upgrade to buy it and you own it and they'll give you updates for up to a year, I believe. So it's an alternative if you don't want to spend every month uh, and this is something that might interest you. I wanted to show you how this works, my workflow, kind of the similarities and the differences between this and Lightroom. So you start out in the browse module here. You can see I've got a photo selected that I want. On the left hand side, you can see the contents of your computer. And you see all the hard drives that I have here. I'm looking at an, an external hard drive that's connected. You don't have to import like you would in Lightroom, import each of these photos into a catalog. There's a catalog type aspect to this, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. So you can just browse any folder that's available on your computer or laptop, which to me makes it easier. You don't really have to go through the import process if you don't want to. So you can see there's a, a view here where I can see multiple photos. There's a view where you can see singles. There is a film strip view as well. So you have a lot of similarities between Lightroom and this in this particular spot. And what I want to do is select this photo and we're in the browse module. Also in the browse module, you can see that there are a number of different presets that come with the, the application. So you can apply presets and we'll show you what those presets would look like based on the picture that you have selected. And then there are a number of different ways that you can browse. What I want to do is bring this into the edit module, which is like the develop module in Lightroom. So you can see now that we are in the edit module. I'll go over a, a number of these different things here in the edit module. I'm going to switch back to single photo so I have more room to edit. Zoom out and you can see now that I'm in fit mode and you can see the photo that I want to edit. It's this beautiful bird. And there are some things that need to be done. So this is a copy of a raw file. Nothing has been done to it as of yet. So we are in the nav, ta nav tab here. You can also see your histograms. It shows you the RGB levels. So you can see what it looks like in the histogram. There's also the info tab where you can see the camera and information about how the photo was taken, what settings are. So you can see it's on the G9, 400 millimeters. I took this with the Leica 100 to 400, ISO 400, 1 1 60th, F63, and no EV. And it gives you a little bit more information about that. There's also a history tab where you can see what has been done. And by default, you can see here that it opens up the photo with a mask on it. And then there are a number of different things you can do on this develop tab, which is where we are. So tone and color, details, lens corrections, and transform. And I wanted to show you one of the things I like about this is there's a lot of AI built in. If you want to use it, it's there. If not, then you certainly don't have to. The one killer feature I want to show you though is AI related. But in Lightroom, there's an auto, uh, auto button here for exposure, tone, and color. And you can do that here as well. And I tend to go over to my histogram and look and see what it's done. And for my likings, those blacks are a little too crushed. So I'm going to bring those down. And so I'm watching the histogram, I'm also looking at the photo itself to see how it looks. This is a lot of, you know, to taste type of stuff and the whites can certainly come up. So I'm going to bring those whites up. That's probably a little too much. Looking at the contrast, contrast looks okay. You can certainly change contrast. There's highlights, there's midtones, which I like, so you can change just the midtones. And then there are shadows, so you can, like in Lightroom, you can change the shadows, bring those up or down. There's also a structure, so you can add a little structure to the image if you choose. And there's a haze, like the dehaze tool that is in Lightroom. There's also an auto for your white balance. So if you want that auto, or you can select these and adjust the temperature and tint on your own. In the details tab, you can add sharpening. You can also add some noise reduction. This was shot at ISO 400. I'm going to add a little bit of noise reduction to this. I usually go, if at 400, I'll go to 40. If it's at 200, I'll go to 20. It's kind of a rule of thumb that I use. It doesn't always work, but that's my basic rule of thumb 40 might be a little bit too much for this image so i'd like to zoom in and just check and see so maybe we'll bring that down 
You want to keep that sharpness and bring it down to 20. And there are settings here that you can use low, high, and then there are other settings that you can change as well. There's a lens, lens correction tab where you can change information about the lens. The distortion also allows you to, to deal with color fringing. And then there's a transform like there is in Lightroom. So you can change the level. If you had something in your picture that was straight and you wanted to level it off, you can see that that, and you can do keystoning and change all these different things about the photo. So what I like to do normally is I'm going to edit the photo and crop it the way that I want it. And then I'm going to go into the effects tab and that's where you can add filters. And that's kind of part of the magic, at least to me for this application. So I'm going to crop this. I like to crop my bird photos at one to one. So again, cropping is it's <laughs> some people don't crop at all and that's fine. I, I tend to crop my pictures, especially bird pictures. So this looks pretty good to me as far as the crop goes. And again, it's a matter of taste. Some people might say that's too tight. I want to focus in on the bird. And what I'd like to do is add sharpening just to the bird and not to the background since it's a little bit noisy and I wouldn't necessarily want to sharpen the background anyway. So we can go over to effects and we can add what they call filters. And so there are a number of different filters, as you can see here, I won't go through all of them. In this case, we're going to look at sharpening. So what I want to do is apply sharpening to a specific area. You can see right now the entire image is sharpened and there are different types of sharpening. You can do fixed focus, which is really, really strong. You can do screen, a number of different things that you can do. Also, there's an opacity slider. So if the effect is too much, you can dial it back again to your taste and you can see here the details. So I'm going to stick with screen. I think that's probably a little too strong, but we'll deal with that in a minute. I wanted to show you is there's a mask available here for the sharpening specifically. And part of the power of this program is the AI. So this is an AI masking tool. And what you want to do is select what you want to keep and what you want to drop for any particular filter. So for sharpening, I don't want to sharpen the background. So you can very easily just draw a red mark that says that I want to drop sharpening there. And then you want to keep sharpening on the bird. So what you can do is just maybe a couple strokes, paying attention to the differences in color. So you can see here that this should create a pretty good mask. So I've told it I want to keep sharpening on the bird. I want to drop sharpening on the background. Click on apply and the algorithm does its thing. And what you're left with when you're done is a automatic selection. Now masking used to take or could take quite a while and this does a really good job so it doesn't nail it 100 percent of the time you can see there, there it missed a little bit of the back here but it's just as simple as going in and maybe adding another dot or two and then applying that again and that will get you a really really good mask now this is sharpening it's something that you might not necessarily need to fuss with a whole bunch but you can refine that as you want i'm happy with this mask so i'm going to click on done and what you'll see is now that it's done, that the sharpening was applied to the bird and it was not applied to the background. And you can see the mask that it created. The great thing is that you can actually copy this mask and use it for others. So if you right click, you can choose copy mask. And let's just say I wanted to add some blur to this one. I probably wouldn't, but just as an example, I can go through and see, add the blur filter. And now you can see everything is blurred out. I just add another mask to that. I can right click and choose paste mask. And that will paste the mask that I have previously. Now in this particular case, you want to invert that mask. And again, it, I wouldn't necessarily do this and you'd want to refine that mask, but just to give you an idea that you can copy and paste those masks. So I don't like the blur. I'm going to remove it. I might want to add some contrast though. So there are again, a number of different filters here and I like to go with dynamic contrast. So again, I can select dynamic contrast. I can paste that mask and then I want to, in this case, I don't want to invert. So I'm going to go back, paste the mask. And now you can see that that dynamic contrast has been applied to the bird. And it might be hard to see on YouTube, but there's some, some micro contrast adjustments that have been made. And again, you can change the opacity. 
So I will, I've been using this masking and it works amazing. So in this particular picture, it did a pretty good job, but a lot of pictures, it's just once that I'll have to draw what I want to keep and what I want to drop. It just does an amazing job of keeping and dropping what you want and creating that mask again, where you would have to potentially just spend hours, uh, depending on, you know, in, in other programs. And I think Lightroom probably has some improved masking, but this is a killer feature for me. And now at this point, I've pretty much got the photo looking the way that I want. I would export this and then I would probably share it. And I shared a similar photo on my Instagram and my Twitter. If you're not following me on Instagram or Twitter, the links are down below. I hope you enjoyed that kind of quick overview of On One Photo Raw 2020 as a possible Lightroom replacement. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, please click on that bell icon that will allow you to be notified when we go live or we produce a new video. Get out there and have your photo gear fun. I will talk at you again in the next video.